Okay, so this is Violet. It's a uh, point and click adventure. Um, and it fits loosely into my recent theme of um, Linux games I bought in bundles that cost me less than 35p each. Uh, now this was a game I did have on uh, on my wish list for a while. Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't actually buy it at, at uh, you know, pay more than a pound on it. Haven't played it for a bit now, which you shall see as we go along. So anyway, uh, there's a story. Here we go for the intro. Uh, the game itself has um, no voice acting in it, I don't think, so uh, easily internationalizable, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it relies on on visual communication for things, which is which is one of the things that's a bit annoying because the visual communication is a bit hard to interpret at times. Anyway, it does look lovely, like a uh, like a cartoon. Here's a family moving into a spooky looking house, complete with uh, uh, interesting Escher pixels on the wall, which we will probably return to later. None of this is actually part of the game. Uh, Mummy and Daddy are fighting. Daughter will go and hide. Finds a thing. What is the thing? Oh. It's a jewelry thing with magical powers. What a surprise! And here we are, actually, into the game. Now you may ask, why did I just make you watch all that? Well, it's a point and click adventure. The story's part of the point. So we're here with some uh, spidery looking woman who's dismantling other insects. And we're trapped. So, let's talk to... Well, let's try to escape. I uh, can't do that. Let's try and grab that. Can't grab that. What can I do? We can swing. We can swing. And we've touched a fairy. Well, we now have the magical ability to um, move things with our mind. There we go. So, we have some abilities. We can now touch things with our mind. Although, apparently, we can't do much to her. There's a switch. Mm. So, it seems like a good chance if we get something metal and put it there. Now, there are also these collectible things. So this is like hidden object, hidden object adventures. Are there any over here? Do you think? Not that I can see. I've no idea what collecting those things does. Now because. I started a new game and already did this bit. You won't share my many minutes of frustration as I uh, figure out how it works. Boom! We're setting things on fire. We may 
maybe escaping. We have escaped. So, there's another jewel. No, there's another jewel. Those aren't jewels, even though they might look like them. That's a jewel. So, there's a fly here, stuck to the fly paper. There's a teapot. And if we try to escape, teapot gets upset about it. So there are a few things we can manipulate here. We can manipulate him. We can manipulate the bottle. We can manipulate this bottle. Freed the fly. Right, there we go. I've trapped the bottle. Let's remove the cork. So that goes into my inventory. And you can see I've got various gubbins. I now have a cork. Now there's also a hint system. But the hint system isn't very, um, it's not wired into what you've done already. So when you click for the first hint, it shows you the first hint, even if you've done whatever is required for that. Uh, so, second hint, yes, we've done that. Third hint, make the fly drink the stuff and then go in the bottle. I drink the stuff and go in the bottle. This is the fun bit. Ooh, I found a note. The kettle is angry. Why is the kettle angry? Could be because that fly is effing annoying. again. Once again. So, in case you haven't spotted it yet, this is one of those moments where the game becomes quite frustrating. Oops. So, I'll edit that accident out. Like I said, this is one of these moments where the game becomes quite frustrating. Because how do you persuade the fly to go in the bowl? Now I did 
get him to go into the bottle once before. But I suspect that was more luck than judgment. That's some nice features, like the way that. Oh, nearly. Like the way the eye of the cattle follows the fly around. Missed him again. Will he go into the battle? No. What can we say? Totally distracted by the fly in the bottle. And oh look, it's that painting. So, very Asher like. Where will I appear? Interesting. see what happens. So in summary, this game is actually quite annoying. Although it does have the hint system, the hint system itself is annoying. And it's almost like they uh, feel like because of the hint system, uh, because of the hint system, they can make things uh, twice as cryptic. Twice as cryptic. Oh, lots of spiders. They can make things twice as cryptic as what they'd otherwise be because they're giving you hints. Uh, I would much rather that. Uh, the puzzles made a bit more, bit more sense. I don't know, and you know. Also, that that fly thing—it's just so annoying. Don't make it random whether you've solved the puzzle or not. It's just, oh, just frustrating. So, in short, if you like point-and-click adventures, you might enjoy this. I mean, the art style is very nice, the music is very nice. The puzzles, I think, are just annoying. But then. I'm never really a big fan of the puzzles in these games anyway, usually, so you've spent a long time watching me play it badly. Um, I think it's probably worth probably worth picking up for about the price I picked it up for, which was 
something around 25 or 30p uh, probably not worth any more than that